Hi, this is Ron with Wheel in the Sky. Today, I've got another great interview with Steve Perry, Neil Sean, and Jonathan Kane of Journey. This is an NBC program called Live at Five. Through my research, I found out that any local news program on NBC was called Live at Five. So I'm not sure the origins of this interview. I do think it's from New York, but I'm not clear about that. Anyway, it's another interview where they have to defend themselves for not making any music videos for MTV. This is a very old interview. Please excuse the quality. And here we go. Uh, we neglected to say where you're going to be appearing in town this weekend, which is important to Journey fans. Yes, we'll be at Meadowlands uh, Saturday and Sunday and on Tuesday. And I think uh, the Tuesday show has some, it was the last show added, so Tuesday still has some tickets available. It's a good view from all the areas. We have video screens, uh, four different ones. So everybody gets a good seat, so, you mm -hmm. know, if you're worried about getting stuck behind a pole, don't worry no about it. No problem with no, the pole. It's going to be 360 we play to the whole uh, special round. stage. Yeah. What's it like touring again after a couple of years off? It's really great. We're really having a good time. Um, audiences have been really warm to us, and we're getting a lot of really close exchange with, you know, the audiences, and it's good to get that energy back again. When you say close exchange, mm. uh, yeah. we <laughs> The audience, they're coming up to the stage, you're going to the stage, they're coming backstage, uh, what kind well, of... Well, no, it's all those things, all those <laughs> things, all those yes, things. Our articles of clothing come up on the stage. Yes, uh, all kinds of panties <laughs> and bras, it's wonderful. And what do you do with them? I, uh, save them. <laughs> <laughs> he wipes his sweat when he throws them yeah, out, you know. usually have phone numbers on them. We have a whole case full of them. No, I'm just kidding. There are no, there are no wives involved here? Uh, and not at this point, no. no. Did the group uh, lifestyle kind of... Uh, you know, that was America? part of the problem, actually, before, that kind of uh, was keeping us away from being a band, is we had uh, some um, internal uh, female problems that wouldn't get along, that wouldn't let us get along. That can happen, you know. In well, Milwaukee. sure, because uh, the group is a marriage of sorts. Yes. You know, and then you've got the marriage at home, and sometimes it's, it's tough, tough to keep it going. Yes. I keep, the consistent theme that I keep reading about you lately, the press you're getting now, is um, you guys in MTV and, and your lack of desire to put together a video for a new release. And uh, I'd like to, you to talk about that a little bit, because MTV was king just a few years back. You but they still are. They're a very powerful medium, and uh, the reason we didn't do a video for the first two tunes is because we really didn't find anything... Um, in a concept wise that was better than just the song by itself and it allowed the imagination to remain intact instead of giving you that visual burn-in of, of a visual image you had a chance to actually in, uh, you know absorb the song for yourself uh -huh. and then what we did do is we did a documentary which will be coming out soon uh, which that excerpt you just saw is from um, uh, it's a 20 minute documentary and from that is A Girl Can't Help It which is all live 100% live audio and live film so it's not a video, it's a performance. You should have told People Magazine that I think part of their review was they had the arrogance not to do a video, but with good reason because they don't need it. Well, I think we were in a good position at the time. Uh, we're, you know, we're fortunate to be able to, to uh, be in that position. A lot of bands are obligated to do a video right off the bat, whether they're ready or not. Here, right. here guys, here's a producer, yeah. here's a director, go do it. And, uh, you know, we were just fortunate enough to be in that position to say, no, and since the name of the album was called Raised on Radio, we said, let's, let's make it a tribute to radio. Make that's them cool. listen. Journey Don't let was, them look. No, was Journey, was so much, <laughs> there was so much uh, controversy going on, too, you know, about... Uh, they were saying, MTV was saying that we weren't going to tour. And here we were like a week into the tour anyway, so we wanted to uh, clarify that, that this is what we are now, yeah. we are playing live. We have about a minute left, and I read something about you that confused me, only because I'm not really... Um, I don't really know a lot about Westwood One. It mm -hmm. seems that you did... A concert of sorts for this, for this Westwood one that, that 20 or 40, 50 million Japanese heard. Yeah, we broadcasted live digital satellite from uh, Detroit. Uh, it was Joe Louis Arena. And uh, it was the first time ever done. I think the uh, first time, I mean, the very first time was a symphony. This is the second time to Japan, the entire continent. You were in a radio, were you at a concert? Uh, we were in a concert studio? situation and we were uh. playing the entire show and right out of a complete truck, two track mix and everything going stereo to a digital satellite was being right over to Japan. This could be a common thing. Well, you know, no one's done it. It's definitely the state of the art. It's the first time it was ever done. Yeah, no one's really done it since Elvis kind of did the uh, Aloha from Hawaii, so it's kind of a... 
to get the thing going worldwide. We thank you for coming by. Thank you. And uh, we remind us. Are you going to come see your show? Probably no, no, not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. And this weekend, you all remember what they told you about where they'll be and all of that sort of stuff. Thank you. Thanks again. All right. All right. Yeah. All right.